Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here, and today we continue with the series of interviews with the Golden Eagle Tom Platts. In this eighth section of our interview, Tom Platts describes his theory of changing or adapting one's body type, in particular, one's muscle fiber type towards bodybuilding. I admit this is a rather controversial issue, but an interesting one that Tom describes. Enjoy. Okay, so I've got a couple of final questions. Um, okay. Just uh, we're reaching the two hour mark and I thought uh, that'd be, I mean, I don't want to take all your day up, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> two hours, that's a good set. Okay. Um, something that really intrigued me that you mentioned earlier was sticking on the natural theme right now um, is that you mentioned that you got up to about 230 pounds as a natural um, and that you almost within those 10 years of training, before you ever touched any anabolic or, or any, any synthetic uh, drug, that you changed your energy system from a meso to towards an ecto. And I gave you the example of how I went from a 65 endo to whatever you want to call it, a 95 kilogram, maybe meso or whatever, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. And I've, I've talked about this in the past that I, I also believe that through hard training slowly over time you can change your energy system do you believe that's to be true oh hardly absolutely i've been there i've done it you yeah. cannot change fiber type you can't go from 2b to type 2a it's not going to just change and it's but some of your 2b will act like 2a out of necessity for what you're giving them you know what i'm saying there's absolutely. an adaption the body adapts I remember, I remember like running 5Ks in the marathon going after every time. I'm going to try it. I'm going to see if I can do it. And I'm like, yeah, I was good at sprinting for 100 yards. And I learned the rhythm. I learned to run. I had to understand, you know, how, how to how to run and how to be aerobic or, or more endurance related. But in terms of squatting, uh, you know, I would take weights that I would, could do five reps with and force 10 out of them. Get 10. Get 10. Then let's get 15. You know, and then it's like. Nobody trained with, with reps that had that one rep day, which was, oh, damn, my nervous system was shook up the whole morning, you know, going, I'd have my classes close to each other, so I have to walk too far when I was in college, you know. Uh, but it's, the feeling beforehand is extreme anxiety. Still this day, squatting, you get anxious, your palms sweat, you start getting a little scared. And then after the set's over, it's like, wow, life is so great. The grass is so green. The sky is so blue for two weeks. Okay. So that's, I still get that from squatting. I, I can't find anything that replaces that. But you're, to stay on your point, uh, changing your energy system, develop more capillary development. Yeah, capillary enhancement is something that I uh, thought about from an intellectual standpoint. Uh, you know, myofibril, I believe that. Um, Mm, it's been a long time since I taught this, that um, myofibrils, you could develop more myofibrils. They were granted, the genetics say you're only blessed with a certain amount of muscle myofibrils, but I believed in, uh, what's it called? I, mean, now you're, I wasn't prepared to get into the physiology of it, um, where, you can develop, where you can develop more fibers. Uh, Hyperplasia. Hyperplasia. Okay, I believe you remodel the body and remodel yeah. to hyperplasia is alive and well yeah people don't believe it they don't want to believe it but hyperplasia does exist and you gotta either go at you gotta, you gotta do the stuff we did but uh, i find from the force reps the negatives the isometrics uh i got better and better and better and stronger okay but my body developed a musculature that really is genetically shouldn't be able to do but through the use of hyperplasia and those concepts uh, you know, more develop more mitochondria, uh, pushing the endurance limit, which was new, not it wasn't really typical explosive strength, low rep guy. I was a, you know, more of a shot putter, and a, I was never a runner. But to, to, to change metabolism, so to speak, was mm -hmm. uh, you know through diet and through training, uh, I was able to remodel. And I truly believe that remodeling. Tissue remodeling is possible in the eye of, well, I need more drugs or I need more genetics. We, we, the privilege we have of being human is we can change everything. We can remodel our tissue, you know, and 
when you realize you, we have that power, like, it's like, you know, and it's a privilege, a privilege to be in this business, a privilege to squat and remodel the mind, the spirit, and the body. I mean, holy smokes. I love I mean, that. You know? I love that. That's fantastic. I mean, but isn't that what bodybuilding is? It's a remodeling of not just the musculature or the structure, the skeletal system, the joints, the organs need to be more efficient, everything. But then your mind, I mean, you, you push past these bar barriers and suddenly you're able to, you know you're able to do certain things that you didn't think before. And that is remodeling, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And then mentally, physically, spiritually, you believe, you know, you see, you get little hints all, all the, you gradually get little things that you go, I can, I can. And there's no, I can, I can, I can. So, you know, it's just, it's, what a thrill. I mean, what a, what a rush. You know, just bodybuilding has been not, not just getting muscle, but wow, inside. I'm like, you know, this, these kind of things don't, hide, you know, um, atrophy. They stay with you all the time. At least during the human phase, or I guess, but uh, I'm like, wow, you know, and, and it, it never ceases to give me a rush. Oh. And I see Jim and I talk to somebody else, and you know, a young man or woman, I'm like, wow, that's why we're gathered here this morning, you know, this is our church. Let's enlighten ourselves and each other and process and take this outside of the, the, the church or the gym and, you know, be that guy or that girl too. So, you know, I mean, that's why I don't understand modern day bodybuilders, you know, pharmacological quagmire. I get it. I'm like, there's something missing. You know, I want to, as good as Phil Heath, and I, I've known from him, that child used to talk to him before I did. She would say, talk to this young kid, you know. Hi, Phil, you know. Um, she knew he was good, and I knew he was good too, but he was before he won any Olympias. I, I was talking to him. And, uh, He's very, very good, very genetically talented for this business. Uh, when I, in his eyes, that life is gone. It is sixth and seventh Olympia. I'm like, he was the body, but there's no spirit. There's no, there's no sparkling in his eyes. It's like, this is some, it's a representation of humanness, but something's missing. Mm -hmm. You know, and I see that a lot of the big guys. In the old days, we just go out there and, you know, let it go. You get it and take. Um, it's like I mean, bodybuilding, you can take and I took and took and take all those years in the gym and still do. It's like playing guitar. When you play guitar, you're, you're, and you're a musician, you take the guitar gift to you, man. You get, you get, you get, you get. I got a cool song, man. Hey, let's try that, you know. Oh, that's art. It's discovery, <laughs> you know. And so that bodybuilding was, you know, I'm sure a lot of people, are, what the hell is he talking about? You know, at least too esoteric. But not at all, Steve. Yeah, you gotta live, live it. And get it. I want, I want that kind of life every day. Something in life every day sparks my, oh, takes my breath away a little bit. You know, just a little bit. And sometimes a lot. Going, Whoa, you know, <laughs> just unannounced. It hits you in the face. Yeah. And I like that kind of kind of life. You know, I could, I could have been a you know, race car driver. <laughs> you know, that that thrill of the yeah. discipline, and focus, and I always think, you know, if I had one more life, Carlos, I could do something else. If God said, hey, Tom, look, you're 67. I'm going to give you one more lifetime, okay? Like the old days, like Moses and those guys were like 200 years old, right? <laughs> 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 I think God cut you down to, one, one, to 120 because he's like, I can't handle the stress of these humans. So he cut us down to 120 years. And you can live to 120 if you do everything pretty good or 80, if you think 80% of the time, right? Um, but I, I think that, uh, I don't know how I want to finish that. If I have one more life, okay, let's do something I'm no good at. I'm terrible at. Let's become a pro golfer. Let's just practice, practice, and practice with the best. Study with the masters. I did that for about 10 years. And when I retired, I, 10 years, I was on the golf course every day going, I'm going to get this. But every time I would leave the golf course, I was frustrated and Pissed off and angry, and I like I the country club. Give me a glass of scotch. Oh, thanks, man. I like the country club atmosphere. I liked, but the gym, I mean, the, the golf course. I never left with that feeling of like wonderment. Like I leave the gym every morning. I, I go to the gym. And I leave the gym. It's like wow, it's great to be alive today. This is great. What a rush. Golf course never gave that to me. It gave me the opposite. 
so I had to retire from golf, you know, at least that was, but, but I think if I had one more life, I could get it, I could do it, I could, even, though I, even though I have no talent, it's not about talent, life is not about talent, it's about desire, attitude, and, and what you want, you know, and being in line with that, and uh, we can do anything we want to do in this life, I mean, there's nothing we can't do as humans, um, you could, you know, if you want, you want to be the fastest sprinter in the world, okay. Be around the best, practice the best. Then you have to sort of determine, you know, your your genetics to some degree. But even then, you can override your genetics through hyperplasia and practice and skill and changing energy systems. So I believe I think it's endless and limitless what we can do. We just have to listen for what we should do. Most people don't listen. They're too caught up in technology and nobody hears that voice in the, the back of their brain going, do this. When you hear that voice, you, okay, let's go. You know you can do. You have no doubts. You know. Anyhow, <laughs> that's that's where I live most of my life. You know, and I look for that in all athletes, and uh, I, I do see it. When I see that in another athlete, like, oh, most athletes don't have that. And I, I look for that when I see that. It's not about sets and reps or how much weight. It's about possessing the attitude. I'm like, you know, that's that's what I'm looking for. That I just identify that to the athlete and say, go, just go, play that up. Don't be like everybody else. Be like yourself. Do what you feel is right. Anyhow, that's that's what I see. You know, it's great. Um, Tom, uh, we've been speaking for almost two and a half hours. It's been. Probably, probably it's called been, it today. No, no, um, <laughs> it's been. Bloody freaking amazing. Um, I uh, I have to, I guess, um, being a father, <laughs> I have to get back now to my family and, you know. <laughs> have a life too, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you also have a lot to do yourself. Um, can we reschedule again for uh, another talk in, in, you know, whenever you have time? Should I talk to Char about that? Uh, Shaw's in charge of the schedule, yes. If you could talk to her about that, we'll plan another another time and another day. Okay, but yeah, I mean, you know, we're just starting to, it's like just, it's like a wet towel going, water is just pouring out of the towel, you know, we can keep going, <laughs> going, going. going. Uh, uh, to be honest, I had four pages of questions and we're only up to the first half of the first page. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, I'll just be quiet, okay? No, 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 no. I love everything we've talked about. Um, I really resonate with a lot of the things you've said. Um, I mean, there's certain little tidbits of of wisdom that you've talked about. Uh, that that's why I came back to to, for example, the hyperplasia talk. Um, you talked about words, um, and I'll and I'll and I'll tell you something that I remember. I'm a big Bruce Lee fan, as you can. You saw my son with a Bruce Lee T-shirt. Yes. Uh, he actually says, be very, he, he said once, and, and really resonated this with me, um, he said, be very careful with words. That's why they're called, that's why they, the, when you when you talk about a word or, or, the, or the word itself, when you want to say it, it requires spelling. A word is a spell. That's what Bruce Lee said. That's really and, good. You and when that, you say free. something, you are literally spelling you are portraying something out there you are giving an energy and i think that that in in many ways also summarizes your energy you, you have an ability to 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 be very positive that's why you've talked about how you you have this background as, as being trained as almost as a, as a preach you bodybuild you body you, you preach bodybuilding you preach motivation and in that regard you, your spells, your words are very positive, and I can't thank you enough for this conversation. It's been enlightening, it's been uh, funny, it's been uh, energetic and positive, and yeah, masculine and everything. I loved it. It was fantastic. That's why vocabulary is so developing a vocabulary. So when I get a, a young man in the gym and they're looking vying for or the girl bikini contest, what words can you use? I mean, I'm gonna. I, a wonderful story about Bruce Lee. I'm going to use that three times. I'll give him credit. I'll give you credit. That's mine. I'm going to no take problem. it. Use it all you like. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Carlos. Thank you very pleasure. much. I'll, I'll be talking to Cha, and um, I, I can't wait for our next conversation. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Bye-bye.
So I do hope you have enjoyed this eighth and final video from my first interview with Tom Platts. As you have heard, Tom discusses the possibility of adapting one's muscle fiber type towards a more advantageous type for bodybuilding. Specifically, Tom mentions the ability of the body to change the amount of mitochondria in muscle, and this has actually been demonstrated in scientific literature. Although Tom argues that the strict muscle fiber types, such as type 1 or 2, cannot be changed, the subclasses of type 2 can actually change with one's chosen field of sport, which shows the plasticity of muscle tissue and its ability to remodel based on one's activities. And of course, it's great to see science catching up with what many of us in the iron game have known for such a long time. If you have enjoyed the video, please give it a like, subscribe and leave your comments and click the bell button so you are notified of the next video interviews as I will be interviewing Tom again and the next series is coming up soon, so stay tuned. Anyway, that's it from me. This is the Golden Era Bookworm saying bye for now. The Golden Eagle Collection is now available at www.goldenerabookworm.com. Select from Upper Body Muscle Mass and Power or Tom's Classic Leg Training Manual, also known as the Bible of Leg Training. All available at www.goldenerabookworm.com. Need a bodybuilding poster for your gym or office? Then check out ironmanmagazinearchive.smugmug.com for the highest quality posters on the planet. Scroll through the galleries of all the legends, including greats such as Arnold, Frank Zane, Sergio Oliva, Serge Nubre, Tom Platts, and Larry Scott, and much, much more, and select your poster now. Online training is now available, including my new program, Novice to Classic, a program geared towards beginners and novices looking at developing a classic physique, as well as Classic Cut, geared at those who wish to lose weight and gain muscle fast. Details available at www.goldenerabooken.com. As a natural bodybuilder, it is imperative to know your own testosterone levels, as they are a reflection of the anabolic environment created by your diet and training. I would highly recommend using the male hormone test kit from Let's Get Checked, and make sure you use my code GOLDEN30 for a 30% discount. Again, the advantage of checking yourself regularly is that you will know how well your body is anabolically primed to put on the much desired muscle you are working for. Get your gym wear and golden era apparel at the new golden era tees shop featuring designs from the silver era and golden era legends available as tanks, shirts, sweatshirts and hoodies in all sizes and colors. To support your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm for merchandise including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases and much, much more. Once again at teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm. Become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. I don't think that Bill Phillips looked at it as I want to compete against them. I want to destroy them. If they pass legislation basically making any type of food supplement a prescription item, that would be the end, the death of the entire food supplement industry. In the 1960s, the sports supplement industry was barely emerging. I think the reason why Joe Weider was so successful was he had Arnold on his side. He wasn't selling supplements. He was in the dream business. Joe Weider was a marketing genius. People would say the promotions or the endorsements back then were cheesy. To me, it wasn't. I loved it. Fitness was taking off. You know, fitness became cool. You had a lot of readers that wanted to be like the stars that they idolized. Bill's strength is his marketing savvy. He's a marketing genius. Got it, got it. It's only vitamin. The right of American citizens to have free access to dietary supplements of their choice. Consult your physician. You might as well consult the next guy you meet on the street. They don't know a damn thing about vitamins and nutrition. The dietary supplement industry became the number two most regulated industry. Nuclear, dietary supplements, pharmaceutical. We are more regulated than drugs. They come in and you uh, need to allow the FDA. They have jurisdiction. The enforcement is kind of the questionable side of it and how do they really get a handle on this monster? A lot of people tell me that the dietary supplement industry is completely unregulated. It's the wild, wild west out there. It's a free for all. 
that could not be further from the truth. A dietary supplement is not allowed to have a side effect. I always say the pharmaceutical has to have a minimum of 100 side effects in order for it to be a drug. And now, it's a $40 billion industry and growing. That's the really interesting thing, is the cast of characters from the 80s, when it was kind of iffy, to now when it's a lot more legitimate. They made it sound cutting edge, revolutionary, and different, and I want that. That's cool. We are in this industry to improve our health. It's not just a vanity project here. We're working on our lifeline. We eat a certain way to improve our health. We train a certain way to improve our health. Supplements are just that. They supplement your work, your graft, your nutrition. Uh, they demonize dietary supplements, but they say all you need is real food. Well, what's a real food? They pump you up and get you hard, stronger, faster, bigger. Doc, I want to take this weight gain. I want to take this pre-workout. That this, no, no way. I, that stuff, we don't know what's in that. It could be, no way. I'm not going to give you, it's going to kill the industry, bottom line. So I must have drank so much protein powder from age 15 to 18 that my head was going to explode. <laughs> I believed in metrics so much that I would probably punch somebody in the face if they tried to take it away from me. <laughs>